Hey everybody, what is up? Jacob back here with another tabletop review for Electric String Player and the PickupTest.com. And today, I have before you the VSound 2 by Signal Wizard Systems. Much like the Your Heaven Audio microphones and Tone Dexter preamp that we've reviewed previously, this little box is part of the digital signal processing revolution that is completely transforming the possibilities for amplified string players. That said, each of these companies has a markedly different approach. The concept behind the V sound is an impulse response or IR loader. Now, what the heck is an impulse response? An impulse response is essentially a digital picture of a room or an acoustic space. Impulse responses have been a staple of the commercial music industry for over a decade now. They're most often used in convolution reverb programs which simulate acoustic spaces and are by far the most popular types of reverbs you'll hear now in commercial recordings. Impulse responses are also very popular with electric guitar players in that they can simulate the sound of large cabinets, allowing players to tour and play live without hauling all of their gear around. In fact, the majority of multi-effects processors for electric guitar and bass already support loading your own third-party IRs right into the box. We're going to revisit that a little bit later. When it comes to creating an impulse response for a tiny resonating chamber like a violin or even a cello, capturing impulse responses is extremely difficult and involves a tedious process. You have to use an almost completely dead room or anechoic chamber to make accurate measurements. The company was also able to get a hold of some world-class instruments by Stradivarius, Guarneri, Lupo, and more. As I mentioned before, impulse responses have been around for a while, and the idea of using them with acoustic instruments is not new. The Fishman Aura system, which even included a single violin impulse response, has been available for over a decade now. But the results with the Fishman Aura system and others like it, particularly with bowed strings, uh, has always been a little bit shoddy. I had several colleagues who owned an Aura and I didn't think any of them were able to get great tone on stage. There was also, of course, the issue of the fact that every pickup, whether you're playing a solid body electric or using a piezo a pickup or a contact mic on your acoustic instrument, has a really different sound, a really different sonic signature that you're feeding into the box. So my first question with the V sound was, would a general solution fit for very different types of pickups. In other words, could one size really fit all? The founder of V-Sound, Patrick Gaydecki, was generous enough to loan me this box for about two months. And it's a good thing, too, because after spending about two months with this unit, I have to say that I've never been more conflicted personally about a product. There are things about the V-Sound that I absolutely love and other things that really left me scratching my head. And in order to be fair to the product and also to give you guys a good idea of what you can get out of this thing, I'm going to separate this video into two buckets. Now let's talk about the box itself. On the pro side, the design is very, very simple with just one input, one output, a volume knob, it's pretty easy to plug in and to start playing. We had immediate questions though about some of the features that were available from the hardware and some that weren't. Let's start with these foot switches. Now, in the case of any preamp DI on the market that I can think of, these are usually reserved for those critical functions that every live performer needs, notably muting and if there's a tuner in there, engaging the tuner and a boost for solos. The V-Sound gives us neither of these two options. Instead, it offers us the ability to bypass the unit, which doesn't mute the signal, and a response select switch, which lets you scroll through the responses. This made no sense to any of us. Forgoing the critical features that live performers need really diminishes the strength of this box as a standalone unit. If 
Paul, Luis, myself, or really any serious performer were using this box live, you'd almost have to bring extra hardware into the equation, like a tuner, uh, a volume pedal, and maybe a boost switch as well. While the ability to bypass the box is a useful feature for dialing in your tone or a being the direct sound against the sound of the IR, None of us could imagine a situation where we would actually be actively bypassing and re-engaging the unit in a live performance during the songs. This switch would be much better allocated for one of the features I mentioned before and the ability to bypass maybe put on the side or the top of the unit where there's plenty of real estate. On a similar note, while it's obviously valuable to be able to change impulse responses from the hardware itself, like the bypass toggle, there were really no live applications for this that we could think of. And to make matters even worse, there's definite latency in changing between one IR to the next. So even if you wanted to change from a Strad IR to a Guarneri in the middle of a performance or in between tunes, you'd have to really watch out for that latency. The response select is also very clumsy and only goes up numerically. So if you miss the IR you're looking for, you have to click 10 times just to get back to where you were, which we found really, really frustrating. Last but not least, the quality of the switches themselves feels pretty cheap and they're extremely loud. We're not talking about soft switches here. So for those of you that perform in quiet acoustic settings, you are definitely not gonna wanna be stomping on this unit mid-performance. The two other features on the unit was a plastic volume knob, which feels a little bit cheap, and a selector switch that is extremely tall and could probably easily be broken off the box. And while the casing for the unit is solid metal, there were definitely some quality control issues that the company still needs to deal with. For example, the USB port was damaged during transit and I had to send the unit back for servicing to fix that issue. Also, when the unit was sent back to me, the housing for the tiny screen was broken and rattling around inside of the unit. Patrick, the founder of vSound, mentioned to me that they were having some issues there and it is a very small company, but this is something to be aware of. Also, upon opening the unit, there is just a single circuit board that is suspended in a pretty tenuous way. If you're a performer that has a pedal board and who's slamming things down or traveling and putting uh, your gear under planes, I would be a little bit worried about the durability of this unit. The V-Sound allows you to load up to 10 impulse responses from their library of fine instruments including uh, Stradivarius, uh, Guarneri, uh, Tononi. Um, there are much fewer cellos available right now, but they are updating their library constantly, including an update that came uh, last month while I was testing the box. The biggest issue right off the bat with the software for the V-Sound was that at this point, it's only compatible with PCs, which turned out to be a huge issue for us. Not only do I not know anyone with a PC, but even finding someone locally on Facebook was really, really difficult. Access, I tried using Bootcamp on my Macs and wine bottles to use the vSound software with the unit, but unfortunately they weren't able to connect with each other. I even took the time to purchase a cheap PC and return it, but even when I was able to successfully load the software, it wasn't communicating with the vSound. After consulting with Patrick, it turned out that the USB port was broken. Unfortunately, the software is definitely not user-friendly outside of just uploading and downloading new IRs. Looking at the hardware itself, it seems like the philosophy of use is to make something that's dead simple that classical players who aren't into doing a lot of tweaking and don't have a lot of knowledge about preamps or electronics in general can simply plug into. Unfortunately, I think that goal falls short in a lot of ways. In the case of the software, we're talking about a user interface that isn't aesthetically pleasing, is a little bit difficult to use, 
especially once you get beyond the simple loading and unloading of files. For example, the company throws in a lot of uh, different types of EQ, some of which are very, very difficult to understand and apply in a logical way unless you're a sound engineer. I would have much rather had them forgo those plugins completely or give us some rudimentary EQ control on the box. From a philosophy of use standpoint, it also didn't make sense to us that a unit that was designed to be this simple really doesn't stand alone very well. Its rudimentary screen only allows you to see the number of the current IR. If you're not in the documentation or looking at the software, you have no idea which preset you're playing through. This would become even more annoying if you'd change the stock presets that the company offers. When much bigger companies in the pro audio world like Line 6 or Boss release a unit before they have editor software for PC and Mac, they make sure that those units can absolutely stand alone in every way. We know that vSound is a much smaller boutique company run by two people, but the first 10 presets the company sends you are also all violin presets. So there was no way to test this with my cello until much, much later. Sound is one thing, but we were also really concerned about the feel of playing through the V-Sound too. In other words, would there be any latency and would it be sort of an artificial experience playing through? I'm really excited to report V-Sound's own uh, uh, claims about the unit are completely true. Playing through the V-Sound feels completely natural. There is no lag. It feels uh, like the same response you would get from just a regular pickup going into a preamp uh, or uh, hearing uh, your microphone through a preamp. Uh, Paul actually commented on how the V sound actually changed how he played when he was hearing it through his headphones uh, working on it in the studio. Uh, he, he talked about the idea that, you know, normally with a pickup there's a little bit of harshness and you, you know, you back off a little bit. And uh, he said with the V sound he just completely relaxed uh, and it really felt like he was playing through a microphone. Because as you're about to hear, there's a massive difference between how each pickup reacts to the V sound and because you're not able to import or create your own IRs through the system, Using the V-Sound is a lot like internet dating. You know, there's a lot of stuff out there that's just not going to work at all for you, <laughs> but it's just about finding that one match, that one perfect match. The results with the Signal Wizards IRs can be drastically different from instrument to instrument and pickup to pickup. In some cases, like with Paul's V-Sound pickup, the Signal Wizard had fantastic results right off the bat. Whereas with other pickup systems, especially a lot of the cello tests we did, the results were a lot less gratifying. So we gave some thought about the best way to give you a good overall view of the box, considering that all of you watching are going to have different rigs that you're working with. And we decided that the best way to go about this would be to make some loops using some of the most common electric instruments and also most common pickup systems that are out there on the market, and then run through the various IRs that the V-Sound has to offer. Before listening to these IRs, it's really important to know what to listen for. Okay, so think about your instrument. Essentially, what we have is a small resonating chamber, right? That's the sound as it's generated inside of your violin, viola, or cello. And then we have a larger resonating chamber, right? The sound goes through the F-holes and into an acoustic space where it blends with the air and finally gets to our ears. Now, in the case of these IRs, they're trying to simulate what it would sound like if your ear was pressed right up against the F-hole. In other words, they're supposed to simulate the acoustic resonating chamber of your instrument. So they're not supposed to be uh, a finished product. They're not supposed to sound like uh, a concert cellist in a hall where you're just listening to the, the, the finished product. 
And this is actually a good thing. If you look at the process of capturing these IRs, whether it's with the Tone Dexter um, or with uh, the process that the Signal Wizard guys used, uh, the microphone is basically close mic. So this would be similar to putting your ear right up against uh, the F hole of a cello or, or a violin or a viola. And if you've ever done that, maybe listening to a friend, you know that right up against the F hole, it doesn't really sound very good, right? It doesn't sound like your instrument. Uh, the sound has to go into an acoustic space and into the air for us to get that realism. In, in fact, in the studio, I usually try to keep the microphone about at least maybe 15 or 16 inches away from my F-hole where it stops being ultra wolfy and the sound really starts to form into what I think a cello should actually sound like. Now, this is a good thing because what it allows us to do is is to take that basic tone and then control uh, the space, uh, whether we're adding reverb to this basic sound in the studio or uh, uh, using uh, an amplifier and using the sound of the room in the club or whatever venue we're playing. And of course there we can also add uh, different amounts of reverb and EQ as well. Traditionally, uh, there have been a few different strategies uh, that players have used uh, for this, like uh, the small reverb feeding into a bigger reverb trick that was documented by uh, Wonderkid engineer Noah Needleman uh, in our Boutique Tone series in the eBootCamp part of the site. Uh, I'll leave a, a link to that below if you're interested. Also, some players have used blending techniques with microphones and pickups, which, as I mentioned earlier, can cause a lot of its own problems. But, so keep in mind that the sound you're listening to is not supposed to be a finished product, but rather an improvement on a close mic positioned right at the F-hole, or uh, a pickup, which is essentially listening or picking up right at the point of the bridge before that sound hits the larger resonating space of the room or the concert hall. For more information about this idea, check out our video, Three Tips for Using IRs with Amplified Violin, Viola, and Cello. And stay tuned for an upcoming video where we demo those sounds. And stay tuned for an upcoming video where we shoot out some of those sounds with some wave maps we made in the Tone Dexter.
my personal thought on the V sound is that it would be much more successful as a piece of software for going the hardware completely. That would open up this technology to a lot more players, as most of us already have the ability to load these IRs into the pedals we already have. So if you have pedal multi-effects by Boss or Line 6 or Moore, the odds are that you can already download third-party IRs into the pedal. So you would save yourself a lot of space on your pedal board. I think it would be tremendous if a company like Signal Wizard Systems made these IRs available as third-party downloads from their website. Right now, because of the cost of development, particularly in recording these IRs, the company has encrypted all of them and so you're not able to download them and use them on any other hardware except for the V-Sound, which to me is a huge shame. I get why the company at their size isn't doing this. It's a little bit like Apple that forces you to use their products if you're going to use Apple software like GarageBand or Final Cut. I believe due to the you know, production issues and quality issues of this unit and the fact that there's not a lot of uh, R&D done from the, uh, the performance side of this, th that the company would be much better off. Well, that's it for now. And if you're watching this video on YouTube and you've gotten this far, you know that there isn't content like this anywhere else online and that making videos like this takes a tremendous amount of effort and time. So we hope you'll consider joining our community at www.thepickuptest.com. At the very least, you'd be a complete jackass to not hit like and subscribe below and leave a comment. We'll see you next time.